Hey guys, Tay Patch here. Welcome to the channel. A little bit different video for you this evening. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a voiceover of a painting session that I went through earlier this evening. So let me kind of set the stage for you right now. This is the uh, tactical suit that I got for Father's Day. And as I had already said, this was done with the Zenithal Prime uh, using the badger style sino res so we've got the black on the bottom the 45 degree gray and then a white on the top and then it has the citadel ultramarine contrast paint over the top of that so uh the video today we're going to actually focus on doing kind of a melt -a burn on the flamer on this tactical suit uh so first things first what we got to do is you're going to see some abaddon black being put uh over the gun casings actually on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and start off this evening by doing that. Uh, basically, the reason that we're doing that is we there was a lot of overspray since I did this with an airbrush. I was really wanting to get that flat machined look, but again, a lot of overspray happened. So easiest thing is just go ahead and clean up the parts that we got blue on that we didn't want. In this case, I'm going ahead and putting it over the gun casing in his left hand first. And then you'll see me a little bit later go over the black casing on the flame weapon. So after we've done the black on the both gun casings, we're going to go ahead and move over to Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher is kind of the amazing go-to uh, base silver for damn near everything I paint. Uh, I just honestly like the way it looks. Uh, it's the closest thing to like a gunmetal slash uh, metal paint, like metal flecked paint that Citadel has. I do think they have like an Eschen gray, which may be the same shade of gray, but it doesn't have like that metal flecking in it. Either way, what we're going to do with that is we're going to go ahead and take care of the front of the Melta weapon, the barrel on the pistol that he had carries in his left left hand, and then a couple of other other highlights, as you'll see here. Once we have that done, we can move on to the meat and potatoes of the effect that we're going to talk about tonight. All right, so now we're gonna get into the super duper fun stuff. Uh, I did this on my eradicators and I got a lot of like good feedback on it. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I get that uh, Melta slash Flamer burnt uh, end style weapon. I'm using actually three shades here, all from Citadel. Reichland Flesh Shade, Druki Violet, and Drakenhof Nightshade. Uh, effectively, when you look at a flame on like a, a match or a candle or something like that, you always got to remember that that blue is where that hottest part is. So I think if you look at like an infrared scanner, it's like a orange to a reddish to a blue, and then there's actually white, which is the, the hottest of, of all of them. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make this effect that starts with like the orangish red, which is why we're using the Reichland uh, flesh shade because it has the that nice red burn in it. Uh, we're going to do that kind of all across the end of the barrel. And then what that's going to allow us to do is while is we're going to build up color after color and you're going to see it kind of fade one into the other. If you try to do it in like a rainbow effect pattern, I found that it does like a weird ring uh, between each colors and it just doesn't look as good. So my suggestion would be use the flesh shade first, do the entire tip, and then we'll move on color by color. So the next color that we're going to start using is the Druki Violet. Uh, I found that that's the best way to go from like the orange to the blue, like maybe orange or red to blue. You combine those two colors and you get a purple. So when you dump like a gasoline in a water or, you know, if you've ever been at a gas station and gasoline like hits a puddle, it makes that kind of weird rainbowy effect. Not really a rainbow, but it has that orangish bluish nonsense and maybe even some silver that's going to help us do that transition. So again, what we're looking to do with this purple is take it not all the way to the end where the or we started the orange, but maybe bring it back about two thirds of the way. So we start building up over the top of that orange and then we're going to take it all the way to the tip. That way, again, when we put the blue over the last part of it, you're going to be able to see transition to transition to transition. Uh, one quick item of note, you didn't see me do it, but a great way to speed up this process. I actually have my wife's old hair dryer. Uh, it has saved me so much time, especially with these shades. Just fire it up on like a, a super low sh setting. The reason being shades being so liquidy, they tend to move around and pool. If you just get it on like a low setting with like a low heat, keep it kind of away from the model, you'll save yourself a good, you know, 10, 15 minutes in, in helping it dry. Plus, if you do this when it's like not wet, but damp, I guess would be a better word. It's going to help with that transitional effect. Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and use the Drakenhof Nightshade. I found that this uh, shade does two great things for me. One, it really completes that orange to it's a blue highlight on these on these burned barrels. Again, the blue being the hottest point of, of the flame, especially when you're looking at it against rolled steel. Also, I use it a lot instead of Nuln Oil when I'm doing uh, Power Armor dry brushing. I found that Nuln Oil is usually really good when you're doing like line highlighting, but when you do the dry brushing, the the blues that you use, the I think it's Fenrisian blue or maybe Fenrisian gray and Calgar blue, hold up better um, when you're actually doing the, the Drakenhof nightshade rather than just the straight null oil. But again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and place the blue on the, the tips where the, the fire is gonna be the hottest. And you'll see in a moment when it comes out, uh, how the effect will actually look. So here we have it, all good and finished. Uh, again, orange to a purple to a blue and sorry about the photo fade or the picture fading in and out here i'll include some photos at the end of the video just to kind of give it a a good high definition uh show but again this is how i do my melted barrels uh hopefully this helped you out uh i've been doing this kind of this way for a while and again i personally i haven't really found a a, a way that's quite as easy uh, to make it look this good. I mean, I'm sure that there's, you know, a more involved way to to do this that probably knocks this out of the park. But again, all total, the process took what, maybe 
five, 10 minutes with a hairdryer. And I think the results actually turned out really, really good.